Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me today in a new video. So today I have a time lapse for you, it's been a while. Um, I'm showing you the time lapse of this cat that I drew last month for my Patreon. I have the process of the eyes in real time here on YouTube. That's the video I uploaded before this one, two weeks ago I think. So I'll put that one on screen if you're interested in seeing the eyes in real time. And today I'm going to upload the whole drawing sped up really fast. So um, the whole drawing took about 14 hours in total and I sped it up to about 11 minutes. So I just wanted to show you the process. The whole real time video is on Patreon narrated. So if you're interested in following along and drawing along, you can have a look there. And today I'm going to talk about um, how I tackled this type of fur while well, you can look at um, the time-lapse process So let's get started here. I'm starting with the eyes. I already had the cat sketched out and now I am Outlining the eye first with brown and then with black later on starting with brown because it's a little easier to erase if necessary and then after outlining, I'm going in with black and darken up the eyelids. So this type of fur is quite a difficult one to draw. It's uh, a fur type with a lot of detail in it, a lot of colors as well. So in order to draw it really well, you need to have a plan before you start. So that is my biggest tip when tackling such a difficult fur type is to have a plan. So with colored pencil I always like to work from light to dark. So you can see I filled in the eyes, that's what I always do first. So I started with the eyes and you can see the process in my previous video. Now moving on with the fur. So what I like to do first is work from light to dark. So putting down a light base layer of the lightest tone that I see in the fur. But before that I mark out the markings first. So this type of cat has always has those same markings on its forehead. That's what you see with a lot of tabby cats. The pattern is always more or less the same. So I started out by mapping those out with a brown and then I go over with black. So I like to mark those out first so that I know that they're in the right place before I add more colors. So that's what I do first, always work in the right direction. So the fur on the forehead above the eyes is more or less going in a vertical way. So growing upwards and then the more you get towards the outsides of the eyes, the fur is growing more towards the, the side of the face, so more horizontally. So that's also a very important thing to keep in mind, always work in the direction of the fur growth. So after mapping out the markings, I go ahead with a base tone of the very lightest color that I see in the fur. And in this case, it's a beige tone. The undertone of this cat's fur is a beige. So I go in with, I use a lot of um, raw umber 10% from Caran d'Ache. So that's a color that I use a lot. It is very similar to the warm grays of the Polychromos line. But the luminance are a little more soft and they layer a little bit easier and I just really like the raw umber 10% from the Caran d'Ache luminance. So that's what I used a lot as a base layer in this fur. I put down a really light layer, almost no pressure, because if you push too hard right away you won't be able to layer enough layers on top later on. So start with very light pressure. And I keep that light pressure until the very last layers. So I try to not push throughout the process. I just layer, layer, layer until the paper gets a little saturated. And then I use the white Caran d'Ache luminance to burnish. So that means pushing the colors into the paper so that you create a nice smooth texture. And after the first layers, I start building up the fur texture by adding shadows. So try to not look at the photo as individual hairs. Try to see all the different lights and shadows in there. Try to look at the contrast and not necessarily at 
the hairs as individuals. And you don't actually need to draw all the individual hairs. As long as you get the lights and the darks in place, um, you already have a very realistic portrait. And I basically keep layering until the paper gets saturated and until I get the effect that I want. I try to put in as many different colors as possible. I'm not only putting in browns and grays, but I'm also putting in blues and uh, purples as well. A color that I really like in this uh, fur type is Caput Morton Violet, which I basically always use. So that's a color that I like to mix in with the browns in order to make the browns a lot more vibrant. Otherwise it could look a little bit flat. So you could see on the cheeks that I mix some of the Caput Morton Violet with the browns that I put in. Also, I try to use different types of browns. The ones that I like the most are Walnut Brown, Van Dyke Brown and a Burnt Umber. Now then, for the bridge of the nose, um, keep an eye on that when you're drawing it. With cats, the fur changes direction there. So between the eyes, the fur changes direction from going upwards towards the forehead to going downwards towards the nose. So you always have that little switch there. So keep an eye on that when drawing the base layers and the rest of the fur in that area. So I start out with a really light tone. I use quite some pinks there. Um, there are There is a little bit of a pink tone on the bridge of the nose. So I added some pinks, some yellows. Then I started adding the small individual shadows in between the individual hairs. So I'm not really drawing hairs here. I am drawing the shadows in between the hairs, so you, so you can create the fur effect. So that's how I work here um, on this cat in general. I'm not drawing the individual hairs, I'm drawing the shadows in between the hairs. That's how you create that um, light hair overlapping dark hair effect, if you know what I mean. Now the sides of the face are a bit difficult because you can see those gray hairs sticking out from the sides. The background is green, which makes the those light hairs stand out really well. And as I'm working on a white background, it will be a lot harder to make those really light hairs stand out. So what I did is I put down a base layer of purple first. So I used violet. You can actually see a bit of a purple tone there in the hairs on the reference photo. So I en enhanced that a bit, added purple as a base tone on the side of the face to still make it look like the hairs are really light, but also make them stand out from the background. I really like to mix in purples and blues as well when drawing really light fur. So um, for the muzzle, I just I just drew around the chin. As you can see, the chin is very light. So I created the white chin by just drawing around it and let the paper show through. I will add some purple as well uh, and some gray on the chin to give it a little more depth. But I start out by just drawing around the chin and start doing the neck first. So on the neck and the rest of the body, the fur gets a little longer, a little thicker, and here I'm definitely not looking at uh, drawing all the individual hairs. I'm more working in clumps, so I try to see all the different clumps of fur and work on creating those shapes that I see. So I constantly look at my reference photo to try to, um, to discover all the different shapes that I see in contrast. And that is a good way to uh, so try to learn to see shapes and not necessarily try to draw on the all the individual hairs or get the color uh, exactly right because that's not really necessary. But I must say, this type of fur was quite difficult. It's not a really big drawing. It's nine by nine inches, if I'm right, and it took about fourteen hours. So. It's quite a long one. I filmed the whole 14 hours. They are on Patreon. And um, 
yeah, it's available to follow as a tutorial. But I hope you got some tips from seeing this video, although it was really fast. I like to switch a bit between doing real-time stuff and sped up stuff. I hadn't uploaded a very sped up video in a long time, so I thought let's do this one as a time lapse today. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Oh, and the materials I'm working with, forgot to say that. I'm using Faber Castell Polychromos colored pencils and Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils. Not a lot though, I'm only using the white and the raw number 10% from the Luminance line. And um, I'm using Kenson 1557 paper, 180 grams. So that's the paper that I always use for colored pencil, which I still really like. And then on top of the basic materials, I'm also using a kneaded eraser by Maped and a Tombow Mono Zero eraser for erasing out the smaller details. And I've also used an indenting tool to indent the whiskers before I started. So that's how I create the white whiskers. So yeah, that's con that concludes this time's video, this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions. Give it a like if you liked it and share the video around if you want to because that really helps me. And then I'll hopefully see you next time or on Patreon, of course. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.